First, I will start by explaining both the positive and negative sides of this problem through the use of a couple flowcharts. So let's start with the negative side, being the process of environmental damage caused by the use of pesticide and fertilizers. To start, if done correctly and used within reason, pesticides and fertilizers have a very minimal impact outside the area of use. However, if used incorrectly, they can be very damaging to two nearby sources of water, groundwater and surface water. Let's look at both these sources of water. To begin, groundwater can be polluted in two main ways, leaching and rainwater runoff. Rainwater runoff is when rainwater washes the dangerous chemicals in lawn slash garden clippings into nearby streams or other waterways. This is made easier by the paved roads in urban areas. Then, the polluted streams replenish the groundwater, absorbing the chemicals into the vital water source. Leaching is when fertilizer dissolves into the soil due to rain or other irrigation. This contaminated water drains downward through the soil and into the groundwater supply. On the other side, the contamination of surface water is rather simple. As stated before, rainwater runoff washes the chemicals from a lawn or field and into a nearby water supply. This is the main way that surface water is polluted. And why is this pollution so bad? Well, aside from the obvious reason of it being poisonous now, there are a few other problems as well. These other problems revolve around a single process known as eutrophication, which is when the phosphorus from the chemicals creates algae plumes in the water source. This leads to four main problems. One, it turns the water green and cloudy. Two, it causes odor problems. Three, it depletes oxygen for fish and other nearby species, suffocating and killing them. And four, it reduces tourist and recreational activity in the area. This graphic clearly depicts this entire process that I have just elaborated on. The negative sides of agricultural-based phosphorus-containing chemicals can be devastating for local populations, wildlife, and even damage the economy. However, there are some positives to these chemicals. However, to be able to minimize the negatives and maximize the positives, certain precautions must be taken with these chemicals. To start, protective gear must be worn at all times. This includes rubber gloves, eye protection, closed toe shoes, long sleeve shirt, and pants. Also, you must first properly dilute the chemicals before use. Uh, the containers they come in all have the needed information on them as to how much you should use and how diluted it should be to maximize effectiveness and minimize environmental impact. To avoid environmental contamination, spot treatments should be used so that it is not a general application throughout the entire area. Also, avoid applying in windy conditions directly before irrigation or rainy weather and never use pesticides or fertilizers on hard surfaces due to the ease that they can be washed off and into storm drains. Also, when disposing of any leftover pesticides and fertilizers, never dump it into drains, gutters, sewers, the trash, soil, hard surfaces, anything like that. Because the only legal way to do it uh, is to bring it to a local hazardous waste disposal facility. If that's all done correctly, pesticides and fertilizers are extremely effective against pests that would otherwise decimate crops as well as preventing the spread of disease through those crops. An added benefit uh, for pesticide use is the reduction in the price of clothing and food due to the lack of predators and pests that would otherwise destroy the crops. And uh, for fertilizers, uh, they provide nit nitrogen for plants and can keep the soil well hydrated as well as reduce erosion uh, so those plants can excel without the uh, threat of weeds and disease. These chemicals do have their ups and downs with severe negative impacts if used incorrectly or excessively, and a lot of positives for the health and growth of the plants and agricultural areas that they are applied to. All of these things are evident in Lake Champlain and the surrounding areas as well. Whether they are incredibly beneficial to Vermont's large agricultural areas and or incredibly damaging to the lake itself is a very important topic at this time. This graphic, which is found on the Lake Champlain Basin Program's website, nicely details the severity of this problem at several locations up and down the lake. It shows exactly how close each location is towards either exceeding or remaining under the phosphorus target levels that were put in place in 2002 by Vermont and Quebec. As we look more closely, these eight locations are the most egregious offenders of the targets. Not only have three of them, Missisquoi Bay, St. Albans Bay, and South Lake, never been under the target level, but these five other locations have all been over the le level more times than they haven't. Furthermore, all small watersheds in the lake exceed the target, with the exception of Shelburne Bay and a very small portion of the New York South Lake watershed. The main factor that slows the progress of these targets is the conversion of agricultural and forest land into developed land, along with stream bank erosion. 
Due to this, there have been very little changes of any kind in the phosphorus levels. Areas that exceed regularly continue to do so, while areas that fall under the target levels usually stay that way. This is very worrying, especially when looking at St. Albans Bay, which has the highest recorded levels of damaging blue-green algae in the state. This next graphic shows the loads of phosphorus that each state or country connected to the lake brings, as well as how much comes from each kind of source. Vermont has the largest impact, with 69% of the total load. The source that has the greatest overall impact is agricultural land use. It is followed by forest land use, stream bank erosion, and urban use. Most of these are already mentioned and described earlier, however there is some new information that should be stated. Most of these sources are considered non-point, which account for 90% of the total phosphorus pollution in the lake. These sources include lawn or garden fertilizers, dairy manure and other agricultural wastes, pet waste, exposed soil, local septic systems, and stream bank erosion. Most of these can also be categorized as runoff. Also, 46% of that 90% is considered urban land use slash runoff, while 38% is from agricultural land. This means that the urban impact is far greater than what it might seem. The main idea for a solution to this difficult to solve problem would be to create buffer zones between agricultural areas and any local streams or water sources like the lake. A buffer zone is an area where grass and other vegetation help trap sediment and decrease the likelihood that nutrients and pesticides would flow into nearby water sources. This would drastically lower the levels of phosphorus runoff from the single biggest source affecting Lake Champlain. It would significantly help almost every single area that struggles to reach the designated target levels almost every year and wouldn't even be that difficult to implement. The process of implementing buffer zones would require less than an acre for a 50 foot buffer zone for the vast majority of farmers. The affected areas would be changed to have permanent vegetation with minimal loss of original crop yield. These small slices of land would be capable of reducing the overall phosphorus runoff dramatically with only a small impact on a handful of farmers and landowners. Buffer zones also provide an important habitat for many species of wildlife in open farmlands by causing an edge effect. This edge provides a safe haven for these species to move between ecosystems. They are also important for maintaining biodiversity in these areas, as they provide a variety of habitats not normally found within large, sprawling, flat farmlands. Because of all this, buffer zones are clearly a very simple, easy to implement slash manage solution to a large problem.